an animated series set in the future in outer space featuring courageous astronauts fighting against an evil empire with an army of killer robots. Action figures with tiny magnets on their feet piloting motorized transforming vehicles. All that and it was developed in cooperation with NASA, the United States National Aeronautic and Space Administration. Why isn't this one of the most popular toy lines that ever existed? Hi, I'm Dan Larson and this is the History of Starcom. Starcom was a 1987 line of vehicles and action figures from Coleco, supported by an animated series produced by Deke Entertainment. It was developed in association with NASA through the Young Astronaut Council to inspire the kids of the 1980s to pursue an interest in science and space exploration. You want to do that one? Yeah. No. <laughs> Of course, there's no better way to get a kid motivated about space exploration than a line of action figures, transforming toys, and an animated series. I mean, what could possibly go wrong except potentially having all that backfire and turning those kids into toy collectors instead? The Young Astronaut Council was founded in 1984 and seems to have lapsed somewhere between then and now, but according to my research, is scheduled to be back in September of 2018, just in time for back to school on Mars. The animated series was adapted for television by animation veteran Bryn Stevens. Bryn had previously worked on shows like Masters of the Universe, She-Ra, My Little Pony, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and others. Later in her career, she would work on Gargoyles, Phantom 2040, and would receive an Emmy nomination for her work on Batman the Animated Series. While there was an animated series, it only lasted for one season of 13 episodes in 1987, one season limited media promotion, and a theme song that just doesn't stick in your head. It's all a formula for the kids of the 80s being completely oblivious to the existence of your toy line. Hindsight is 2020, but come on, Nintendo and Sega had been out for two years. Proper marketing should have required a video game to grab those potential astronaut kids' eyeballs. Starcom was a battle between the forces defending Earth and the evil army of Emperor Dark. Same old story, Emperor Dark wants to destroy Starcom and their cumbersome bureaucracy so he can install himself as the ultimate ruler of Earth, the galaxy, and possess the powers of both God and man. But the guys below him really don't seem all that evil. He's got a lot of robots that are just following their program that can be fixed, and a lot of guys with mustaches who themselves aren't inherently evil. Maybe some of them are evil, but most of these guys, they're just collecting paychecks. It's not about alien obelisks and laser gun fights, it's about logistics. A missile can destroy a single ship. A well-maintained supply chain will build an empire on the ashes of a once great civilization. Earth's first line of defense has a breakthrough in space technology, Magnalock. It defies the law of gravity. Activate Starcom equipment. Control Starcom weapons. Figures and vehicles each sold separately. Magnalock, a mighty power for Starcom. A deadly threat in the hands of the Shadow Force. Who will survive? Starcom toys set themselves apart through their use of several motorized play gimmicks. Some of those gimmicks took a vehicle from passive to battle mode, others opened cockpits or cargo holds. A lot of the transformation was built around the idea of making the vehicles smaller so they could be deployed to the battlefield in a more efficient manner, whether it was a tank, a space jet, or a troop transport. Some features had to be wound, some wound automatically, would wind themselves, as the weapon or cargo hold door was reset, well, no, I can't. I have wound, wood, and wind. Yeah. Wound, wood, and wind. <laughs> a lot of the transformation was built around the idea of making the vehicles smaller so they could be deployed to the battlefield in a more efficient manner, whether it was a tank, a space jet, or a troop transport. Some features had to be wound, some would automatically wind themselves as the weapon or cargo hold door was reset, and others could be activated using the magnet features on the tiny figure's boots. Magnetic feature on the tiny figure's boots. <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm good with that. The secondary play feature was the magnetic boots and tiny visors. Kids already love action figures that fit securely in their pockets. At two inches tall, you could easily lose two or three figures a day out on the playground. Easy. Tiny, easily lost, fragile plastic translucent visors and magnetic boots that allowed them to stick to the various metal panels in the vehicles, playsets, and anything else made out of metal made them too much to resist for the dozen of kids who knew they existed. There are 
are dozens of us. Dozens! Starcom was heavy on scientific experiment. Hmm. Experimentation. Experimentioning. Experimentation. Starcom was heavy on scientific experimentation. Starcom was heavy on scientific experimentation themes and technical stuff, which bored the cool kids like me. The first episode of the cartoon spends more time talking about the space whales the Starcom team is trying to study than it does blowing things up or exchanging laser fire. They don't even have a special musical cue for when vehicles change modes or deliver cargo. How do you expect to reinforce the play appeal of the toys without properly signaling when to not look away from the TV? Starcom didn't fare well in the United States. 1987 was a very crowded year representing the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s as far as toys were concerned. The shelves were crammed with action figure properties. G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man, Battle Beast, Visionaries, Air Raiders, Mask, Ghostbusters, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon debuted. Starcom and whatever potentially revolutionary toy concepts it may have introduced was crushed between the tides of outgoing and incoming iconic toy properties. While it died in the United States, Starcom was much more popular overseas after Mattel took over promotion of the line. They removed the US flag from the decals and packaging and re-released both the toys and the single season of the cartoon. Far more products saw release internationally and the series experienced a longer shelf life and far later into the 90s than it did in the US. Starcom was an obscure toy line from the 80s that hit bigger internationally than it did in the US even with the strength of a cartoon and the Young Astronaut Council. Those daring astronaut scientists fought off the armies of Emperor Dark, but were no match for American kids' preference for Super Mario Brothers and Mutant Ninja Turtles. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. Share this video, and if you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Are you a space astronaut? Could toys have convinced you to become one? Have toys ever convinced you to do anything? other than buy more toys? Let us know down in the comments if any figures have made a pretty good case. <laughs> Cut.